Good morning and welcome to Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church, the little church with a big heart. I'm Dimple Vitito and it's an honor to welcome you to our church. We are so glad that you've decided to worship with us today. Be sure to like and share our worship service so that everyone can hear the good news that is promised today. Let us now begin with worship. with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 15 through 19. Look down from heaven and see, from your holy and glorious perch. Where are your energy and your might, your concern and your pity? Don't hold back. You are surely our Father, even though Abraham doesn't know us and Israel doesn't recognize us. Lord, you, Lord, are our Father. Your reputation since long ago is that of our Redeemer. Why do you lead us astray, Lord, from your ways? Why do you harden our hearts so we don't fear you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your heritage. Why do the wicked bring down your holy place? Why did your enemies trample your sanctuary? For too long we have been like those you don't rule, like those not known by your name. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. 
This Lent, we are talking about finding sanctuary again. As we are still hoping and praying that COVID-19 ends soon, and as we are all doing our jobs to quarantine, social distance, wear masks in public, and get our vaccines, we are still spending lots of time in our homes. I get how difficult it is to deal with the same routines day in and day out for almost 365 days. I understand and I'm also dealing with COVID fatigue, but we still all need to do our parts to stop the spread of the coronavirus. As we are all doing our part still a year later, we need this sermon series and this emphasis on finding sanctuary again. Here at Pleasant Grove UMC, we are still doing online worship at least until April. So we are not only experiencing COVID, fat COVID fatigue, we are also lonesome for worship in our church. With, everyone, with everything going on, we must be cultivating and creating spaces in our everyday life for finding a place in our homes where God can dwell with us. The last two Sundays, we focused on how God wanted the Israelites to build a sanctuary where everyone would see and know that there is a place in the middle of God's people where the presence of God would dwell, a sanctuary. Then we turn to the New Testament to see how through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the full presence of God could, could make sanctuary in us. God, if invited, could dwell inside of us. We do not need any physical building to encounter the full presence of God. We can meet God in our living room, bedrooms, garages, at work, at school, anywhere we go. God can be with us through what Jesus did on the cross. So during this time of this worldwide pandemic, which is still raging, we must all continue to do our parts to end it. We also need to find our sanctuaries every day. So today, after we have looked at what God wants, God's dwelling place in the midst of God's people, and how God's full presence can now dwell inside, of, inside each of us through Jesus, we make a little shift. In our scripture from the book of Isaiah today, we see God's people praying for God to deliver them and redeem the sanctuary they have lost. Isaiah prays for God to look down from the heavens and bless them with the compassion, mercy, and might that seems so far away. The prophet Isaiah is considered one of the greatest or the prince of the prophets in the Old Testament. And his name literally means the Lord saves. The Lord's ability for divine deliverance and redemption is literally... Uh, Isaiah's namesake. But Isaiah writes the verses of the book of Isaiah during a very uncertain period in Isaiah's history. We have been talking about how to find sanctuary again, and today we'll talk about how we lost it. The people of Israel have been living in the land of Canaan for over a thousand years, but feel generations removed from their God. Now, two major things were happening in the spiritual landscape of the Israelites during these times. The first thing was that the people of God were corrupting their faith by adding other gods to their worship. Some totally forgot about God, Yahweh, and some considered other gods on par with Yahweh. This meant that lots of Israelites were putting their hope and trust not in God, but in false promises and hopes. The other thing going on was that through Israelites' prosperous years, they had a high level of comfortability. Because they were comfortable uh, where they were and prosperous, they forgot all about the, the people God chooses to identify with the most, which, is, which are the poor, the outcasts, widows, orphans, and immigrants. They socially trampled these people's, what we would call rights, to keep their own high quality of livelihood. These two things and some others are what led to Israel's, Israel's spiritual degradation. In addition to their spiritual decline, politically they uh, are challenged by neighboring nations and worldly watching the expansion of the Assyrian Empire coming closer to their doorstep. This is not Israel's golden age. In 721, Assyria conquers Israel, and 20 years later, in 701, the southern kingdom of Judah. <clears throat> the later chapters of Isaiah, which we read from today, also address Jews who are in exile following Babylon's conquest of Jerusalem in 586. This is where our scripture, which is entitled A Prayer of Divine Deliverance, lives, in the tension between what is and what could be. In our scripture today, God is the Holy One of Israel, who has punished his rebellious people. Israel, Isaiah has plenty of choice words to describe his country people throughout the book of Isaiah. That they are blind and deaf to God, 
They are a vineyard that will be trampled, that they are a people devoid of justice and righteousness. In verse 16, Isaiah writes, God, you are surely our father, even though Abraham doesn't know us and Israel couldn't recognize us. Some biblical scholars believe this is Isaiah's confession that people have become so degenerate that if Abraham and Jacob were to return from the dead, they would not know uh, them, the current people of Israel, to be their seed and offspring. Yet Isaiah knows the Lord saves, that God will have compassion on his people and will deliver them from political and spiritual loss. In verse 17, Isaiah pleads, God, return for our sake. Isaiah longs for God to return and dwell among God's people. Isaiah foresees their sanctuary will be lost and his prophecies become lived realities when Israel's first temple is destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BCE, the second by the Roman Empire in 770 years after Jesus' birth. We all know 2020 was a tough year. We could easily ask God, God, where is your concern and your pity? Why do, you harden our, why do you harden our hearts so we don't fear you, just as Isaiah did? You could say these aren't statements of faith, but actuality, but actually it is a prayer of faith asking for God to return. They want affection and attention from God. And maybe we feel the same. We may be the people who know we have wandered from worship, lost touch with our spiritual home, walked away from sanctuaries for easier comforts. Even taking five minutes a day to practice your faith may seem like too much. But if we long for God's compassion, mercy, and might, we have, we have show up to. We have been talking about how to find sanctuary again. And we as a church want to find our way to return to God this Lent. To be more in tune with God's affection and attention. Lent is a season of the church which invites us to try a different rhythm so we can find our sanctuary again. May we this day, this third Sunday in Lent, not give up on pursuing God, but allow God to dwell with us, to become our sanctuary, and renew that compassion and strength and desire for the full presence of God this day and every day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Thank you for joining us today at Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church, the little church with the big heart. We're so glad you worshiped with us. Please come back next week and visit with us. And also, don't forget to share with your friends and family on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again and have a blessed week.